Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, October 12th, 529 a.m. Central Time. Mixed trade in the grain markets this morning. December corn futures down a quarter cent at 487 and three quarters. November soybeans up four and a quarter at 1256 and three quarters. December Chicago wheat up three quarters of a cent at 556 and three quarters. December Kansas City wheat up a quarter at 667 and a half. December spring wheat up three and a quarter at 721 and a half. Soybean market has really fallen apart lately. Let's start off there. So soybean futures posted their lowest trade in 22 months. The nearby November 23 contract bottomed at $12.51 a bushel on Wednesday, the lowest trade for any spot month contract since December of 2021. Large money managers are likely net short a small amount of soybean contracts in real time following the recent sell-off. Seasonal pressure paired with a poor book of U.S. export sales has pressured the market. Calendar spreads remain weak and trade near record wide uh, trade near record wide levels. There's a few things to discuss here. So seasonals are one thing. I mean, the market is row crop markets, corn and soybeans are typically weak this time of year. And, and typically, you know, on average over time, you'll try to carve out some sort of harvest glow around October 1st. Seasonals don't always work. They work sometimes. Um, on average over time, that's the case. But we don't have to bottom in here anytime soon. Uh, the other thing would be the book of export sales. Uh, the book of U.S. export sales for the current marketing year is running 32% behind last year's pace. USDA projects that for this current marketing year, uh, total soybean exports out of the U.S. will decline by only 10%. So we're not where we need to be in terms of export sales. A lot of that has to do with the big Brazilian crop last year, expectations for another big Brazilian crop, issues on the river, that sort of thing. Calendar spreads are a big deal. So if you're a large money manager, it is a hell of a lot easier to be short the market in this sort of environment uh, than being long the market. So if you look at the carries, uh, from Nov to Jan, there's 19 cents a carry. From Nov to March, there's 31 cents a carry. From Nov to May, there's 43. From Nov to July, there's 50 cents. So if the funds are, are if you're a fund trader, you're not short the market. Uh, when we get close to November contract expiration here, you're going to be able to buy back your November futures at say 1250 and then sell, you know, the March 31 cents higher than that. It's just like a built in advantage if you're short the market. And that's Part of the reason that the funds are short corn, that's part of the reason the funds are short SRW wheat. Uh, when you can roll into those carries with a short position, it makes a hell of a lot easier. Private groups estimating that funds were probably net short about 5,000 contracts of soybeans at yesterday's close, which is the first time they've held a material. I don't want to call that material, but a size of you know something we can measure uh, in quite a long time. So this is uh, all not good. Um, I think that you know you look at the balance sheet and yet it looks tight, but. If that export number drops, it, it could look a lot looser really easily. So not not a good action here. In terms of my thoughts on the markets, I, I don't like to give opinions here, but it's uh, it's tricky. Don't ever let anybody tell you that markets are easy or marketing is easy. This is very, very difficult. I don't like being bearish when the market's in the dumpster like it is right now. But at the same time, um, there's just not a lot here fundamentally for me to hang my hat on. So I have some conflicting uh, opinions, certainly. The U.S. radar is active this morning. Overnight rains fell across portions of South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. A separate system sits over the far southeastern portion of the country. Totals over the next three days are slated to reach two to three inches across northern areas of the Mississippi River Valley. Harvest is likely stalled in some areas today, although river relief would be welcome. Harvest has been moving very quickly. Corn and soybean harvest pace as of Sunday were both ahead of schedule. Soybeans well ahead of schedule. So you could see some holdups here today. Um, there's not a whole lot of difference in the three-day map, which is on the screen now, versus the seven-day map. Like Most of the rain you're going to see here is going to be this coming weekend. And then we kind of turn dry again. The Army Corps does not project any improvement on the river. The level at Memphis is 11.3 feet below normal at 4 a.m. this morning which is a, a new record low. We're very close to it. And they project that we're going to continue to stay near these record lows. So this river, this river thing affects so many things. It's affected uh, export demand. It's affected basis. It's affected spreads. It's affected everything. And we really, really need to see an improvement there. USDA will release its monthly crop production and WASD report today at 11 central time. USDA will update its old crop U.S. balance sheets to reflect the stocks numbers released two weeks ago. Traders expect 2023 U.S. corn and soybean production estimates to drop compared to last month. 
Traders estimate the U.S. corn yield at 173.5 bushels per acre ahead of the report versus 173.8 bushels per acre last month. Traders estimate the soybean yield at 49.9 bushels per acre versus 50.1 bushels per acre last month. Generally speaking, the time to trade U.S. yields is June, July, and into August. And by September, October, we're on to other things. We're on to demand. We're starting to look at the South American production situation. That doesn't mean that USDA couldn't surprise us today. I don't know what a bullish report looks like in this environment. So they're looking for a, a three-tenths of a bushel drop in the corn yield. What, what sort of, of yield number do you need to see in order to uh, see a bullish reaction in the corn market? Is it a full bushel? Is it a bushel and a half? Is it two bushels? I think it probably needs to be something closer to like a bushel and a half off the corn yield to see a positive reaction and then take a step forward. Assume for a second that you do see that, that lower yield number and you get that positive reaction. What kind of selling pressure emerges following that positive reaction? Uh, we've been told that the U.S. farmer, generally speaking, is undersold as it relates to the 2023 crop and that farmer selling may very well emerge above the market. So this is tricky. Uh, soybeans, you know, the, the balance sheet's really sensitive. If they were to say, come in and surprise us and shave a full bushel off the bean yield, that would be very friendly, I think. So this report is out at 11. Be prepared for a little bit of volatility around that time. So if you guys are not already subscribed to our premium content, you should probably check it out. Joe, can you tell me about uh, what we put together yesterday for our premium subscribers? Brian was on with me yesterday, and I mentioned in the first segment about soybeans, um, how funds prefer to be short these markets with a lot of carry and, and the soybean market as an example those are like record wide carries in the bean market um we did a whole chart review ran through corn soybeans wheat uh some of the outside markets too talked about the downtrends that we're seeing in agricultural markets some of the downside targets that brian has as it relates to the charts brian's great with charts and had some some projections in terms of all this stuff if you guys want to see the premium content we put a new video out every single business day uh, that's in addition to our morning email, which goes out at 5 a.m. Central Time. Just a ton of stuff direct from us every single business day. This is a $50 a month subscription. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. It takes like one minute to sign up on your phone or on your computer. All you need is your credit card. Uh, check that out today, guys. USDA reported a flash sale of U.S. soybeans on Wednesday. U.S. exporters sold 121,000 metric tons of soybeans to China for delivery during the current marketing year. Exporters also sold 213,000 metric tons of soybeans to unknown destinations for delivery during the current marketing year. I'm sorry, guys, but this isn't what you want to see at all. This is this is less than routine business. I know every time there's a flash sale, everybody and their brother has to post it on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else. But this is just not what you want to see. These are these are minimal amounts of beans being sold to China and elsewhere. This is not going to move the needle in terms of the market or trader sentiment or the book of export sales. We need to see 500. We need to see a million tons. And, and we're just not seeing it. This is like bottom of the barrel business. This is like minimum amounts for Chinese buyers. It's just, it's a lot to be desired here in terms of the export program. Um, how do you improve exports? Well, you got to either become competitive versus South America. And maybe the way that you do that is through some sort of uh, Brazilian weather issue, something along those lines. But uh, this is just, it, this looks good at face value. Oh, we sold beans to China. Guys, it's not, this is not what you need. This is, this is less than routine. It's, it's not supportive to the market. The September producer price index increased more than expected at 0.5%, which was up from the predicted 0.3% increase. Gasoline and food prices were key contributors to the rise in prices, increasing 5.4% and 0.9% respectively. On a yearly basis, PPI increased 2.2%, which was the largest move since April. More economic data will be announced today with the CPI report being released at 7.30 Central Time here this morning. The report is forecast to show that inflation is still cooling, with a monthly increase landing between 03 to 0.4% and a yearly increase right around 3.6%. So PPI, the producer price index, this is on the wholesale side, and it got down to like almost zero, and now we're back to 2.2. It peaked at 11.7% March of last year. So we're generally, you know, we, we've uh, perked up a little bit here in terms of inflation, a little bit hotter the last couple of months. But generally speaking, you're, you're close-ish to the Fed's target. I just don't think the Fed is going to take their foot off the gas 
anytime soon. The, the general consensus is that, yeah, they're going to pause in November, 91% chance of a pause uh, this morning, according to the CME Fed tool. But I don't think the cuts happen anytime soon. And I know a lot of people, myself included, I believe that inflation uh, was actually substantially higher in reality than what the government reported, uh, certainly on the consumer side. I don't know about the wholesale side, but uh, that doesn't matter. Our opinion on this doesn't really matter. What matters is what the Fed is going to do as it relates to interest rates. And that's why we care about this so much. So a bit more on the Fed. Uh, officials seem to be split on future rate hikes. Minutes from the Fed's September meeting show the majority of officials believe one more hike in the Fed funds rate is necessary. The projection, however, was made before the acceleration in long-term yields. The minutes also showed that all policymakers agree that rates will need to remain elevated in order for the Fed to meet its inflation target of 2%. The Fed will likely analyze economic and financial data over the next month before deciding if a rate hike is needed in December. Yeah, so we'll see how CPI comes out later this morning. They're looking for 3.6, which would be down from 3.7 headline. The Fed likes to look at those core numbers, which exclude like energy and food prices, which doesn't never made any sense to me. But in any case, yeah, I mean, higher for longer seems to be the trend. I just don't know if they're going much higher than where they're at right now, which is Fed fund at five and a quarter or something like that effectively. What did cattle do yesterday? Uh, cattle futures finally found some solid ground on Wednesday. Feeder cattle futures closed an average of a buck 37 higher. Live cattle futures closed an average of 139 higher. Choice box beef ended the day at $300.28. That was down 78 cents. Select end of the day at 275.30. That was down 85 cents. Corrections, even in bull markets, are healthy. And this has been a correction. Maybe we found some footing, maybe not. You pull back the cattle charts, they still look friendly to me. Uh, outside markets this morning, guys, US dollar is close to flat. Stocks are higher. The S&P is up 18. The Dow's up 130. Bonds are up a little bit. Crude oil is up 80 cents in the November WTI, 84.28. Uh, prices there really cooled down after all that excitement early in the week following the Middle East situation. Have a great day, guys. Remember, report at 11. We'll talk to you Friday.